What, what, what's the first thought that goes through your mind? Well, when I, I went to pass him, I slow down, but I get over in the left lane and I go to pass him. As soon as I pass him, like I've told uh, him before, I've done this uh, hundreds of times where I've come across doubles and they start doing this rattling or this shaking and I'll use the back, I back out of it. So that's what I did. When I seen him starting to fishtail, I backed out of it because I didn't get my, I don't even think I got the right front tire past his truck when he started bob. he started bobbing. So when I was backing out, all of a sudden his, that vehicle fishtailed and it smacked my right corner of mine and that caused it to flip. And basically his vehicle flipped on top of my truck and my truck pushed, I don't know how long it pushed, and then it basically, I guess they parted away somewhere and I went sliding on one side, and I don't recall where he slid to. Okay, just walk me through in your own words, in as direct what detail, what, what happens once that thing when is he, Basically, when, he, when, it, when it hit and it flipped, it shot up on my hood. So now, I, even though it's an accident, I, I don't have no visibility at, at all now. So from there, it's like, in my mind, I'm, I'm scared and I'm thinking about, am I going to die? And that's the only thing that's crossed my mind. And I still remember, I still remember him. We were still together. I don't know how long. Like I said, I don't know at what point we separated. And from there, that was the only thing. My mind went blank from there. What did you tell the police that happened? Basically the same thing that he pretty much fished tail over my lane. All right. So you told the police you were in the left lane and the trailer hit you and flipped over on top of you in the left lane? Right. Uh, is that correct? Yes, it hit and flipped on top of the vehicle. And, and, and but I want to make sure that you told the police that you were in the left-hand lane when the collision yes. occurred? Um, and you told the police that you were in the left-hand lane and the trailer hit the right side of your vehicle, right? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. And then the trailer flipped over yep. on top of your hood? Yes. You testified to me that you saw it, mm -hmm. whether it had lights or didn't have lights, mm -hmm. is not the cause of this accident, is it? No, it's because he twist tail. Do you have a, a an estimate for how fast the vehicle towing the vehicle is going? No, I do not. I mean, do you have a feeling that it was, was it less than 55 miles per hour or more than 55 miles per I, hour? I really couldn't say. Okay, I, so you don't have any I, estimate yeah, as to how I, fast the other vehicle is going? I, okay, am I correct on that? Right. Okay. Anything going on about his truck or trailer that caused you any concerns about passing at 64 but miles per hour? Before I came up on him? B b before you got into the left lane? I mean, he was doing the little, he was doing the, what I call the little swaying, right. which is common among anybody pulling uh, vehicles without the proper restraint, too. Okay. Uh, like I said, we've seen him with the UPS and the FedEx guy when they pulled the doubles. All right, so. but did, did that cause you any concerns about passing them at 64 miles per hour? Not really. You get to within 150 to 200 feet. You see anything unusual going on with the vehicle? I mean, is it swaying? Is it fishtailing? You know that as you're approaching. From as the I'm rear. approaching, I mean, it's doing, but it's not doing it as much. Okay. It's not. Okay. I don't, I don't know if it's the um, wind factor, whatever plays the deal when two vehicles get beside each other. Because like I've seen it with FedEx and UPS, I'll see them do it. And you, like my, my thing is I try to teach my students also to slow down, basically let them, maybe they need to gain control or whatever. So that's what I did. But I seen it when he was doing a little shaking. Um, I know what you tell me. First of all, you know from your experiences as a truck driver in the past that when a vehicle is being towed by another vehicle, it tends to, to sway. sway some, correct? Yes. Um, and, and you know that from having watched vehicles do that in the past, yes. right? Yes. And as you're approaching from the rear, um, you, you, you say it may be swaying a little bit, but it's not leaving its lane, right? It's not, but it's swaying. Like I said, you can see it's just doing this right here. It's just doing this fast little. Okay, so before you switch lanes, you're seeing it sway a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. Um, but it's not swaying over into uh, the left-hand lane, correct? Right, yes. So you um, decide that you're going to go around that vehicle, right? Yes. Um, but 
uh, when you do that, you're already thinking to yourself, I got to be careful here because you've seen some sway, yes. right? And then as you go to pass the vehicle on the left, yes, um, you see it start to sway more than more, before. Yes. And you hit your brakes then, right? I basically slow down. Yes, yeah, hit my brakes because I was at the point at that time. I'm thinking I'm just gonna slow down, back out of it, and give him a chance to regain. I guess get better control of his truck. Because the the, the 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 safe thing to do when you see the trailer swaying like that is just to slow down and let the other guy get control, right? Jake Ford. Basically. I mean, I mean that's what you've been taught to do, yes. right? And that's what you've done in the past and, in those situations, right? Yes. Um, and, and the reason that you're supposed to do that is it sort of reduces the hazard by not trying to just run through there, right? Right. Okay. I know a lot's been talked about the amount of sway on the vehicle that was in tow by the plaintiff in this case. When you actually made the decision to get in the left lane to pass him, how much was that rear tow vehicle swaying that you could tell? It was doing it like the whole of those, the whole, pretty much the whole time that I had been watching it. You know, I was doing it that. You, uh, do you normally use your cruise control? Not when it's uh, raining. Okay. The the Georgia-South Carolina line, you see that from the way the, the concrete looks and everything, that yes, it looks yes. like there's just been a big storm that went through. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. All right. And and when you say, you, I'm assuming that what you see is you see water on the road. Is yes. That it? The fact that um, you usually don't use your cruise control when it's been raining, raining or wet. snow, any, any bad weather. Okay. So, um, and because of that, you don't think your cruise control was on at the time of the accident, right? Right. Uh, because explain to me why it's it's dangerous or or unsafe to use <laughs> cruise control when the ground is wet, like it was at the time of the accident. It deform. Well, they give us a class, and they don't really tell us. They go into that detail why it's dangerous. They just we don't use it in the snow or the rain. On cruise control and something happens, you, got you can't get your foot onto the brake. It takes a little more time to get your foot on the brake to slow the vehicle down than it would be if you were just using the gas pedal, right? Check the form. I mean, that's what they say, but I don't think that well, there's that much of a difference from you having your foot on the gas pedal versus having it sitting. Well, you know, one of the, one of the real dangers of using cruise control when it's wet mm -hmm. on the ground outside is that if you see a problem happening in front of you, if you just let your foot off to see what's happening, you're still going at the same speed as you're on cruise, whereas if you're not, you're going to start slowing down automatically, right? Mm -hmm. you have to fall. Is that a yes? Yes. And, and so that's one of the reasons that you don't use cruise control when it's wet outside, right? Right. Uh, and you've, you've known that as a truck driver for years, correct? Is, is that a yes? Yes. All right. And so, if, if I understand correctly, then when you were switching to the left lane and traveling the lane, you wouldn't have been using cruise control, no. would you? No. Because that wouldn't have been safe, would it? No. Okay. When, when, you, when you feel that first hit from the uh, trailer, mm -hmm. you're already braking, right? Is that true? Yes. All right. And, and you did, do you continue to brake during that whole time period? I, that I don't recall because like I got to say, my, my mind blank. From, okay. from the, I, it blanked. Okay. And I was scared. All right. And um, with, the, with their, it, when you first noticed it, did his trailer actually go into your lane of travel? That's what, it, that's when I was, I noticed it was getting closer. 
it was getting closer. And when I went to slow down, it went on ahead and clipped my it clipped my tire and my front bim, front bender a bumper. Gotcha. Okay. So then then the um, uh, when you see it start to sway to come over towards you, uh, you put on the brakes and decide to stop the act of, of making the lane stop change, right? Stop just going back. Jack Floyd. Going back just to stop and let him continue on. Right. And, and the, the idea is then you're going to let the trailer kind of get under control. and Let then him get control of his vehicle. Okay. Um, so then and, and the, the braking that you're doing, I mean, is this like... It's not a hard brake. Right. It's a brake to... Not, I'm not going to through a hard break with that type of weather. Cause right. I don't, you're, I don't want to fish tail with my load. Gotcha. So you're not, you're not, you're not slamming on brakes. You're oh, just no, slowing I'm down. Not, no, cause I don't want to take that chance of my trailer. All right, getting out of control. So, um, the the trailer basically struck the um, the like the passenger side right, of your tractor. Basically. All right. So, and, and it would have been the um, front. Right, right side of your tractor, correct? Yes. Um, and that would have been the area uh, above the front tractor tire? Yes. All right, and that's where the trailer initially struck your tractor was along the, the, the right side of the right. tractor above the wheel. Am I correct? Well, I don't know exactly. There's, there's a bunch of damage. That's how it is. I'm just in that area. If I'm sort of drawing this, uh, exhibit number two is your tractor. tractor. Um, where this thing struck you is sort of sure. where I put all these X's, is that correct? Yes. All right. After it struck that area where all these X's are, the, um, the trailer actually flipped up on it top flipped, of your hood. It actually flipped. Uh, am I correct? It flipped up on yeah. top of your hood? Explain to me why it is that your vehicle went from the left-hand lane past the right-hand lane onto the side of the road. Check the form. I mean... I I really can't recall because of me, like I said, I was scared. The last thing I, I just remember thinking, am I going to die when all, when all this was going on? Okay. Um, did, I mean, do you think, you know, thinking back now to what happened, do you feel like the trailer drug you to the right or do you have any idea why you went I'm, right? I'm, I'm, I have no idea. Okay. So you see here today, you don't have any reason as to why your vehicle went from the left lane to the right. Is that correct? Right. A uh, rear end collision is the, the worst, as far as SWIFT is concerned. It's like one of the major accidents that can get you terminated. You can lose your contract, lose your job, because they feel that is, uh, there's really no reason for it. That and, and, and back and back. And we're constantly doing training videos, simulations throughout, throughout the years for that. Right. And, and, and you're taught and trained by SWIFT that rear end collisions are usually preventable. They correct? are preventable. And, and as a truck driver, you recognize that rear end collisions are preventable. Yes. All right. And so in a situation where a driver is involved in a, a rear end collision, from your perspective as a truck driver, it's normally the truck driver's fault, correct? Yes. Same objections before. All right.